Hello, I'm Andy Rash, the technical trainer for DMAG Cranes and Components. In this video, I want to show you more detail of the features of a board that are important when changing out to a new board. Here we have a new modular board. I've removed the ISS module from it so that you can see the baseboard and see the details I'm talking about a little bit clearer. One of the most prominent places to look is this red cell of dip switches. And it's important to note that you match the switches on the new board to those on the board you're taking out. The most important one that you'll notice is on bridge applications, the number five dip switch will be on to tell the baseboard it's in a bridge application. In a hoist, typically only the number one switch will be turned on when the control board is located in hoist number two. The hoist number one control board, the number one dip switch is turned off. And most of the time, all the switches will be turned off in the hoist. Sometimes, very rarely, number four will be on, on a hoist. And number four is for abrupt braking of the trolley function. If you see it turned on on the old board, consider turning it on for the new board. One additional mention about the red dip switches is switch number six. If I'm starting up a crane and conducting a rated load test, turning switch six on gives me 15 minutes of lifting capacity up to 146% of the rated load. That allows me to conduct my rated load test. Now if the rated load test takes longer than 15 minutes, you might have to cycle this switch multiple times. But if you forget to turn it back, it times out after 15 minutes. You might see this turned on and find one in the field that was left turned on simply turn it off as that's the proper running condition. There are more dip switches besides the red cell of dip switches. There's a cell of white dip switches here and a smaller cell located at this point. The small cell of dip switches never needs to be changed in the field. It's in the run condition as the board is delivered. It's a programming access for factory level. The number one switch here though in the larger set of dip switches in the white cell turns on a CAN bus resistor at the end of the CAN bus branch of communication. And many times when there's no radio in a hoist on a crane the end of the branch for communication is this switch. And number one needs to be turned on in those cases. Basically duplicate the switch position of the board you are taking out and you're pretty safe in making the right selection. On the rotary switches located above the red cell of dip switches, the common settings for the bridge are zero, zero, zero. For a hoist, the common settings are A, 5, and 7. Always look at the switch position of the old board and duplicate it on the new board. For the multiple plugs that are found on the board, simply take them from the old board and put them in the proper sockets on the new board. The new board has etchings next to each one of the sockets to identify them. The most important two sockets and plugs are the X16FI and the X48 next to it. In the common default positions of the programming and hardware, these jumpers are in place to simulate travel limit switches either for the bridge or used for trolley travel on a hoist board. That means that the default parameters as a board is provided are 
defining that the system has these switches. If they're present, their plugs go into these sockets. But most cranes do not have the travel limits. So a plug with an adapter for jumpers is provided in the replacement board set. And it's important to match the condition of the old board with either a jumper or the actual plug-in from the limit switch at these two sockets. If not, the system isn't going to run after you start it up. Always remember that the EEPROM chip must be removed from the old board and carried over to the new board. This must be done with no power on either board when the transfer is happening. It is held in with a plastic push pin. If your plastic push pin is missing, please substitute a small cable tie to secure it in place. This concludes our video showing the basic features that you need to be aware of when you change out a new board for an old one.